Ada, stop. We have to talk. Pounding footsteps and heavy breathing echoed through the hallways of the Vinci Medical Research Center. Rounding a corner, Ada flew off with her grapple gun, gracefully landing on the opposite side of an open shipping crate storage room. Your friend likes to play hard to get. She always been like this? Helena had a mixed tone to her voice. One part concern and three parts sarcasm. Yeah, Leon puffed as they continued to chase. Yeah, uh, she's always just like this. Across the room, the two agents heard more voices. There she is! Cut her off! I've got her! Ada was running herself into a trap. The two strangers had approached from the two walkways of the room, locking her into a corner. She had nowhere to go. A spray of bullets landed at her feet as one of them aggressively approached her from the front. Turning around, she realized the other had caught up to her from behind. They both had military rifles and were cautiously aiming at her as they slowly moved in. She stared them both down, her gaze flicking to the larger of the two men as she noticed Leon and Helena quickly approaching from behind him. In fear that she was about to be shot, Leon violently slapped the rifle in the larger man's hands, the shock resulting in him accidentally firing a number of rounds that just missed Ada's head as the sparks rained down from the impacts up the wall. The risky movement he lost his grip and the rifle flew out of his hands. In a panic, he swung a punch towards Leon, who quickly ducked out of the way and threw a high kick back. For a few seconds, they wrestled, unsure of what the outcome would be. Leon ensued a knee to the gut. He caught the stranger in a headlock, ultimately leading to a weight imbalance as he was tackled to the ground. The break in the action allowed both men to draw a sidearm, and they raised one at, at, at the other, almost in sync. Both breathing heavily, they stared at each other for a moment until Leon broke the silence. Chris? Confusion and concern immediately crossed Chris's face as he realized we just kicked the shit out of Leon? Quickly glancing at Piers, he was relieved to see that he had maintained his focus on Ada, in case she tried to slip away into confusion. What are you doing here? Helena, who had lagged behind slightly, rushed to join the group, readying her gun but unsure of who she should point at. A smirk crossed Ada's face, though no one really paid attention to it. Put your gun down, Chris. Leon holstered his own. She's a key witness. We need her. A witness! She was the one who did all this! Chris's raised voice and temper shook the walkway they stood upon. No, it wasn't her. It was Simmons, the National Security Advisor. Leon tried to explain before being swiftly interrupted. I lost all my men because of her! And I lost over 70,000 people, including the President because of Simmons. Leon raised his to match. Chris's face softened ever so slightly. There was more going on than he realized. He quickly looked at Ada, who shot him a sickly sweet smile. He went back to Leon, with pain in his eyes. She's working for Neo Umbrella. You know what that means? Yeah, I do. Leon's reply was stern. And you're still going to protect her? Yeah, I am. With half the room's attention not focused on her, it was just enough time and distraction for Ada to let a flashbang gently slip from her hands. Captain! The other man with Chris, Piers, yelled out as he saw the grenade fall and clack against the metal floor. Leon shot around just as the explosion went off, blinding all four people. As their vision cleared, they could only watch as Ada made her daring escape with her grapple gun. She's heading towards the roof! Captain, what do you want me to do? Piers said. Chris began to stride towards him when Leon made him stop by placing a hand gently on his chest. Chris, I need to talk to her. In his eyes there was desperation. Chris could tell how important this was to him. Leon, what the hell is going on? I lost my whole squad but peers because of her. Do you know how much damage she's caused? The pain in his voice is obvious. Leon couldn't imagine what he had gone through. I don't know what she's done, but I need her alive. Make her face justice for what she did to your men. They deserve that. Just give me five minutes. That's all I need. Please. Leon continued. Chris nodded. The pain in his eyes was clear to see, but Leon's reasoning had won him over. If anything happens, though, I'm interrupting. Thanks, Chris. I owe you one. Leon smiled at him, though there was a somber touch to his expression. He had no idea the pain and damage Ada had caused Chris, yet something didn't feel right. You owe me way more than just one. Chris scoffed as he walked over to Piers. He started discussing the plan of attack for apprehending Ada. You sure you can trust her? Leon turned back to Helena. She looked a mixture of dead serious and concerned. We have a history together. I'll be okay. Leon and Chris stood on opposite sides of the door leading to the balcony on the roof of the building. 
quietly, they exchanged nods, and Leon opened the door while Chris stayed behind out of sight. Through luck and good timing, Ada was there, and she was walking towards the railing. Ada, wait! She glanced over her shoulder, watching carefully as Leon slowly raised his arms, indicating that he was unarmed. I just want to talk. Five minutes, please. A bemused look crossed her face, and with a smirk she responded, Fine, but I'll be counting the minutes. Turning once again with her back to him, she placed a briefcase up onto the balcony railing, opened it, and began to shuffle around with its contents. Not willing to push his luck with the added sting of the flashbang incident that happened moments earlier, he opted to keep a comfortable distance from her, hoping she will amuse him for just long enough to shine some light on what the hell is going on. Is it true? Are you really working for Neo Umbrella? For Simmons? A dry laugh pierced the cold night sky. You know the old saying, some men just want to watch the world burn? Well, she giggled slightly, some women want to watch it burn, too. There was a venom in her voice, a venom unlike anything he'd heard from her before. The puzzle pieces in his mind started to come together. The five minutes he had were ticking away. The dramatic shift in outfit, in behavior, in personality, in motive. Who are you, really? She froze with her back to him, visibly stiffened. I made a Wong. No, you're not. Slowly turning to face him, he felt a slight shiver hit him as her piercing stare shot through him. Yes, I am. Before he had a chance to react, she had pulled a gun out of the briefcase behind her. Something cold pierced his neck with a sharp pain. He reflectively backed up as he yanked a syringe out of his neck. I was saving that one for Simmons, but I think it suits you better. As he fell to his knees in pain, his body stiffening, dark veins growing across his skin, he watched as she carefully closed the briefcase and prepared her grapple. You're no better than the rest of them. The last thing he heard from her was a light laughter that drifted on the wind as she zipped down the side of the building. Knowing he only had a few seconds, losing motor control in a panic state growing, he struggled to retrieve his communicator, speed dialing Helena. Hey, did you get a chance to- Helena, I don't have much time. That woman is not Ada. She shot me with a... She could only watch as he screamed while the flames engulfed his body, and the video feed shut off due to him dropping the device for the sheer power of the heat. Her hands started to shake as she gripped the communicator tighter. Signal loss blinked over and over, barely masking the freeze frame of Leon engulfed in fire behind. She should have gone with him. She should have done something. After everything he did for her, after everything they've been through, after how much he trusted her when he had no reason to, she let him down like this, like Deborah, like everyone. She had no one left but herself now, channeling the white-hot anger that boiled inside her. She focused on the thought of Simmons. He caused all of this. He will pay for it all. Not giving her time to overthink it, she took off towards the Kuen Lung building. It wasn't too far away, and it was her last shot at taking down Simmons. She knew he would be there. The intel from the agent that Leon knew was solid. She would just have to do it alone. Like she always had. I won't forget what you did for me, and Deborah. I swear I will never forget. She choked back tears as she gave one final glance at her communicator, before flicking the screen off. By the time Chris realized what had happened, it was too late. He kicked the door open and readied his rifle, but the flash of heat and fire before him caused a flinch. Through the fumes and the flickering, he caught a glimpse of Ada, swinging off the edge railing of the balcony and plunging down the side of the building. Everything happened so fast. His eyes shot back to where the fire was, a glistening green cocoon forming in its place. The panic crept up on him. It started with a feeling in the pit of his stomach. It rose to his head and hands. He started to shake. His head felt light. Things started to become a blur. His breathing hastened. Chris knew what was coming. Not again. Not this soon. Not Leon. He shoved himself into the doorframe for support. It was hard to breathe. The fumes and the stink of burnt cloves and whatever biological matter the cocoon did was didn't help. He stared at the floor, focused on each breath. In and out. In and out. Captain! Captain! What's going on? Captain! Pierre's voice pulled him back. Fuck. Fuck. He shot one last glance at the cocoon. He was too late again. He was always too late. He's gone, Piers. Leon's gone. 
His voice trembled almost as much as his hand did as he responded into the radio. He started sprinting down the staircase, away from the balcony, away from the cocoon, away from whatever's going to come out of it, away so that he wouldn't have to face it. Not again. Piers was ready with a military vehicle. As soon as Chris jumped in, he punched the accelerator and the car screeched off. She took off towards the port. I've alerted all other units in the area. He flicked a glance at Chris, seeing the strain in his face as he fought back tears. I promise we'll get her. I won't stop until we do. Hey everyone, it's uh, Soft Megan. Before I end this video, I do want to say some things. Uh, the original creator of the fanfic, You Came This Far Just Speaking of a Monster, is pretty fly shy guy. I'll be linking their Tumblr and their fanfic in the description below. And a second thing I want to say is the music you heard in the background is a mashup of the both level clear themes from uh, Hotline Miami 1 and 2, uh, Videodrome and Crush, created by Renegade Rooster. I was given permission to read the fanfic by Pretty Fly Shy Guy. So expect me to be reading all of the chapters. Another thing I want to say is I am making a PMV based on the first chapter of the fanfic. It'll be to the to the song. It's also incredibly loud by Glass Animals. So be on the horizon for that. And one more thing, I will be streaming the rest of Resident Evil 2 Remake. It's just that, you know, with life and school in the way. I won't have all the time in the world, so be on the lookout for that. Um, as I'm recording this 12, 13, 20, 20, I will be streaming at 3 o'clock. And with that being said, uh, please check out the people listed in the description. Pretty Fly Shy Guy, Renegade Rooster, and this is the Soft Mink. Signing out.